Davis and 22 calling Newark. Is he Davis and 22 calling Newark? Okay, 22. Don't be so business like us. I'm trying to tell you I'm landing in Newark. Never mind the fighter camp. Make it lobster clever to our mama genie. Okay, 22. a pair of strange feet, large and very flat. And they belong to Joe Allen, Department of Commerce Inspector. Oh, hello. How are you, Mr. Allen? Pleased to meet you. What? My name's Davis. Yes, I know. That was a very fancy landing. You mean this one? You know what I mean. The next one like it will cost you a suspension. Uh-huh, wrong again. There's not going to be any next one. I'm not kidding. If you want to fly around here, you better watch your step. Well, I've never had much fun doing that, Mr. Allen, but however, I'll try. Let me see your pilot's license. Pilot's well, license, there we are. You'll notice I made application for renewal. Yeah, I see you've applied for a waiver for physical defect. What is it? Skippy Pump, six years old. Oh, uh, tell me, how is Washington on us old cripples these days? Tough. They're holding up licenses they used to renew without batting an eye. Ah. You write a very lovely hand, Joseph. I suppose you're going to turn me in. I got my job to do. But I'm no stool pigeon. You get away with that fancy landing this time. Thank you. Get my nose spot inspecting, Jake. Everything's all set for you. Good. You're as lucky as ever, you look. <laughs> Baldy, my luggage. <laughs> you know, Des, that Bureau of Commerce is getting awful tough lately. I wouldn't tangle with that Joe Allen if I were you. Don't worry about that Joe Allen. We'll take care of him. Your bottom. bag sure got a swell gargle. What did I tell you about that cap? Put that cap on that head. Yeah. How's Mary? Oh, she's fine. She's coming over to pick us up pretty soon. Oh, that's swell. And how's your matrimony, Tex? Still moaning along? On a clear day, I can hear in Cleveland. <laughs> Send me your love? Sure. Yeah, I'll bet you did. And a hand crocheted bottle of arsenic. Come on, I want to see Buzz. All right, I've seen him in years. Hiya, Buzz. Welcome home. Hey, kid, you want to meet a real pilot? Around here? I'd be delighted. Come on. Hey, Diz, I want you to meet somebody. Thomas, Thomas, Diz, Diz. How are you? Oh. Hello. I'm Dizzy Davis. Yes, I know. How'd you know? Oh, Tex happened to mention it when he introduced us. Well, Tex, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Oh, shucks, that was nothing. Anybody in my place would have done the same thing. There you go, same old generous Tex. Say, uh, what is this, aviator? Just sold it a few minutes ago. Tex is teaching me to fly. Ah. Yep, I'm a daddy. Gee, huh? Goodbye, daddy. Goodbye. Say, mister, I thought I was pretty good until I saw you come in. Gee, your landing was a honey. Do you like it? Wish I could fly like that. Well, how about letting me give you a lesson or two? Oh, would you? I can't think of anything I'd rather do. Keep your fingers crossed. He'll give you that Davis runaround. I've heard of that maneuver. Oh, has its good points. Mm. Landing in Florida North. Go ahead, Blandy. Over Harrisburg at 12,000. Rob, CVU. Go ahead. Okay, Blandy. Say, why don't you throw away that monkey wrench? Anything for a pal. Mm -hmm. Number 11 inspected. Express mail and passenger manifest checked, ready to take off. Right. Any special instructions? Yes, keep your eye on the weather. Map's going to change fast the next couple of days. I want you two fellas to meet each other. It's Pilot Lawson, Dizzy Davis. Hello. Oh, oh welcome back to New York. Thanks. Lawson's my right-hand man. He's in charge of all test work, overhaul, and motor replacements. You must be a good fella. Have all that responsibility. Sure, he keeps his mind on his job. He's developing that new de-icer. Keeps the ice from forming on the wings. Go over it with him, will you? When you have time. Yeah, yeah. How about tomorrow? Hmm? I say, how about tomorrow? Tomorrow? Oh, uh, tomorrow, let's see, tomorrow. Oh, uh, Tommy. What are we doing tomorrow? We? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, what are you doing tomorrow? Ask me the day after tomorrow. Never thought I'd live to see the day. You see, Davis was a good guy when he had it. You underestimate me, boys. That was just round one. We'll give her that one. Dizzy, mm -hmm. a lady wants conversation with you. Take it over here, Romeo. Hold the line. Hello. Who? Bertie. Ah, her name is Bertie. That's her first clue. How'd you find out I was here? It was in the papers, my boy. It was in the papers. Can Bertie read? Oh, Dizzy, when you left the way you did, you broke my heart. <laughs> you said you were going to the drugstore for a cigar. No, I didn't see you anymore. Why, Bertie, like, well, that, that's all over. That's ended. Oh, but it isn't over, Dizzy. My lawyer said it wasn't. <laughs> Your lawyer? Preacher, what promise? Go on, it's romance. Now, now, listen, Bertie, after, after a year, a thing like that's outlawed. You can write off your income tax. Headed straight for Atlanta. What? Oh, yes, well, certainly you can, dear. That's a, that's a deductible loss. Obsolation, depreciation. Shut up! Oh, no, 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 not you, not you, darling, no. no. Well, I didn't make you any promises. Uh, we had a grand time, but really there was nothing serious about it. No, we were only clowning, Bertie. Oh, no, no. Uh, no, I'm all alone. That was, just the, that was just the radio, the loudspeaker. Oh, now, what's the point of doing all that? You know, we could have a grand time here if you just do the smart thing and, and stop all this lawyer business. Oh, now, sweetheart, you, you know you've always been a three-alarm fire with me. Well, certainly, if you, just, if you just get your lawyer to call off his dogs. <laughs> Will you shut up? Uh-huh. Oh, uh, no, no, really, really, I couldn't. I, uh, I promised Mr. Lee I'd have dinner with some of the directors. Oh, we could cancel that. We could not. Huh? Uh, where are you living, darling? <laughs> the Martha Washington. Oh, I couldn't get in there again. Why not? Oh, fine, funny fella. Shut up, will you? Hmm? Well, this is the way it's going to be done. Look, I'm going to be in Cleveland the next three days, and then uh, the next weekend we'll have a swell party. Oh, but, but maybe you won't come back from Cleveland. Why, sure. You, you know, I wouldn't lie to you. And not much. Of course not. Uh, what? That, that's right, sweet. Yes. Yeah, all right. Bye-bye, darling. I'll, yeah, I'll call you. Goodbye. <sighs> Lawyers. Got to get out of here. Yes, Sonova, you don't know how right you are. You fly the noon plane west tomorrow, come back the next day two days off than the regular schedule. Yeah, here we go. Right back on the old merry-go-round. Dizzy Davis, the flying postman. Oh, a text. Uh, do you know any new numbers in Cleveland? There's lawyers there, too, you know. Uh, Jack Hewitt sports a good-looking Cleveland redhead. Maybe you could get him to go halves. Yeah. Now be sure to get the half that eats. Listen, you lug. What's the dope on that force landing yesterday? You know, I haven't missed you at all. I'm that little cocker spaniel box just the way you do. You heard me. What's the dope on that force landing? Is this official? Well, no, not if you don't want it to be. Well, here it is. I'm balling the jacket about a thousand feet when a swell chateau passes under my left wing. Biggest place you ever saw. Beautiful lawns and gravel driveways and a big swimming pool. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, in the pool are four beautiful dames. Four. Four. Long hair? Couldn't tell at that altitude. Then the unexpected happened. A magneto block got loose. Yeah. A magneto block got loose. You got loose and Al Stone's loose and he knows all about it. Who told him? I don't know. He got the report in Cleveland. He guessed the rest. He wanted to fire you. Fire me? Since when can he fire anybody? He runs the airline. Uh, he may be boss, but he doesn't run it. I'd quit before I let a guy like that fire me. Yeah? Well, the guy, they don't call you bluff. Incidentally, now that you're here, where are you going to stay? Uh, Tex asked me to stop at his place. Oh. Huh? See. I was just telling Jake you asked me to stop at your place. Oh, yeah. Well, sure. Oh, well, then everything's all settled, then. Sure. I guess I'd better call Lou. Ask her what she's going to have for dinner. Yeah. You're looking so worried about Tex. Thought you told me you wore the pants in your home. Uh, you know doggone well I do. Hello, Lou. This is Tex, your husband. Uh, look, honey, Dizzy's here. No, 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 nothing like that. We haven't even had to drink of water. She sends you her best, Dizzy. Yes. Yeah, uh, look, honey, I, I thought until uh, Dizzy was permanently settled that maybe we could put him up. Be firm now, Texas. Remember, you're the man of the house. Uh, well, couldn't you put the puppies off the sleeping porch? Yes, and into the bathtub, I suppose. <laughs> no, I don't expect him to sleep with us. Well, couldn't we put a cot in the hole? Well, there's the sofa in the living room. Oh, you're doing fine. 
Why didn't you tell me your mother was coming? Of course he couldn't do that. I could try. All right, honey. All right, I'll be there when I get there. Bye, honey. Dizzy, uh, Lou says her mother's coming on from Cleveland. I'm sorry. I bet you are. Huh? Well, that's all right, Tex. Forget it. I'll get a little place of my own. You can come and live with me. Wouldn't be bad. <laughs> <laughs> 